In this video, I'd like to cover, uh, even though this is really not a project that's found in the IEB curriculum, I want to cover what it means to be, the difference between um, bottom-up and top-down modeling, so assembly. And specifically, when we look at bottom-up modeling is that this is kind of where I'm going to start, is you're going to notice here I've got in a folder here with the piston assembly is what I'm calling this. So I got four parts, four individual parts created into uh, each individual component of a design file. So here I've got an untitled design file. I'm going to go ahead and save this within the piston assembly and I'm going to go ahead and name this piston assembly and say save. Now, the thing is, when I go to work with this piston assembly, is that this is the assembly file that I've created. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in, by right-clicking on the crankcase, this will be the first component I bring in. And this is very similar to a lot of bottom-up modeling you'll see in Autodesk Inventor or some other popular CAD programs. So I'm going to say Insert into Current Design. And when I do that, it may bring it in, and I'm probably going to have to go through and rotate it 90 degrees to get it in the orientation that I want. You'll see that anytime it kind of brings it in, but it's not a hard thing to do. So we are bringing in the component and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So here's the crankcase. You'll notice it has a little link icon. It's because it's linked to another file. And one thing we're going to do is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say ground. So I want to go ahead and remove the degrees of freedom. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in the crankshaft. So I'm going to right click and say insert into design. Now the one thing that will happen is it's going to put it right on top and that's okay. And I'm going to kind of move it out of way so that way we can see this. And I'm going to go ahead and say okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and start assembling. So I'm going to go to joint and from here I'm going to choose what kind of motion. Well this crank shaft is going to rotate inside of the crank case. So I'm going to choose the revolute motion position to snap. I'm going to hover over this, and the thing is, is when I hover over the cylinder here that would be the axle that runs through the hole, I'm going to choose what kind that I want. I can usually get three options. So here's my three options. I get one, which would be the very end. I got the opposite end, and then when I get towards the middle, it's the, the direct middle between those two other options that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the middle. It's going to then select, and then I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go hover to the inside of this circle. Now it can be kind of hard because there's a lot of things to click on. So what I do is I hold the shift key on my keyboard. Actually it's the control key. And when you hold the control key it, you'll notice it, it holds those joint origins for me to select. So even though I'm moving my mouse all around on this part it still only let me choose the three. So holding control helps do that. Let's do that. I'm going to click the middle one and that's going to put the crank the crankshaft in there and it's going to show the animation of that being able to turn and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. If I turn to the front I can see this is pretty well set and it's pretty even in there as well. So this is a file in millimeters and here in a moment we'll go through and see that. What I can do here as well is if I look under joints I can right click and I can say animate model and that will go through and it'll show the rotation of that particular part. So and then if I would also say animate joint, it's going to do the same thing because there's no other components. Animating model is when you have a lot of different components together. So I'm going to say cancel, stop that. I can collapse the joints folder. Now I'm going to bring in the connecting rod. Right click on it and say insert into current design. And I may want to go through and bring this up. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this to 90 degrees as well as do this. And I'm going to say OK. And then I go ahead and use the joint option. I'm going to do another revolute motion. I'm going to choose in the snap on the inside of this, holding control. I can choose the middle. And then on the, on the, actually on part two, to select this option, I can choose the middle of the, crank, of the crankshaft as well. So here, now the only thing is it looks like I may have gone through, so I'm going to hit cancel. I may need to go through and recheck my joint options. So here, again, zoom in, holding control, choosing that middle joint origin, going over here. You'll notice there's one down here. There's one on the end. Here's the middle. There we go. Now we're seeing the proper placement that I was hoping to get. And I can go ahead and say OK. So now, here's what happens, is that now these guys are moving together. And if I if I go to move 
this as well so this doesn't really move because the crankcase it will move if I was to lock the crankcase motion so the joint for the revolute let me lock this one now you'll see that we're going to get motion there so that's kind of what's going on in this file as you go along okay let me go ahead and unlock that first revolute okay last one let's go ahead and put in the piston I'm going to insert into current design um, as I kind of position this and get this prepared and ready I always like to get it in the position that I'd like to to put this in I'm going to end up doing another joint I'm going to do a revolute so my motion is going to stay the same I'm going to select the snap so I want to choose the first option so I'm going to kind of hover or kind of rotate and see underneath here here's my piston I'll zoom in I'm going to choose the outside of this part and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the corresponding part so which would be right here and click now the only thing is is you're going to see that there's a little bit of a of an issue here this is a great time to take a look at doing an offset so the offset in this case as I look to offset it I'm in inches um, I could also type in so typically these parts are made in millimeters so let me do 10 millimeters let me do a negative 10 millimeters and notice how that'll center the piston um, right inside of the crankcase and even though we're in inches it's going to automatically convert that over and that's exactly what we want in this scenario is we want this piston so you'll see here it's kind of doing this so and that's okay because of that I'm going to hit control Z to bring back to the original position and what we're going to do is we're going to apply one more constraint we're going to do a joint and I'm going to choose motion and I'm going to go to slider so the slider motion my first part I'm going to choose the outside of the piston cap and then I'm going to choose the inside which I may need to see if I click on the inside you'll see there's a joint origin and it will move into place I'll say OK so now when I go to move this I can't move it out it's got to stay in line with that particular component so I'm going to go ahead and close this down I'm going to go ahead and look at look at my if I animate my first revolute there will be my model that is running and all these parts have to move together because of that first revolute being animated together so this is a very quick um, again this is going to be bot this is an example of bottom-up modeling so I, I chose a part and I chose a model that would be very simple for parts just to kind of demonstrate that in another video I'm going to show you how to do top-down modeling and I'll show you by utilizing some parts that were work that, that I kind of work with to, in order to do that but otherwise um, what you can do here is you can save this assembly and then what you could do is utilize the assembly the assembly file and create some different documentation such as exploded views assembly drawings 